Good morning. This is Ronald Allen, Managing Change Through Effective Communications. And today I am back on our pristine preserve, White Bog's Blueberry Farm. And as you can see, the sun has risen. I got out here a little later than I anticipated. And it is still very chilly. It is absolutely serene and beautiful. And as you can see, I've parked myself on one of the kind of viaducts that they create. Good morning, MD. Thank you for checking in with us. Um, I've parked myself on one of these viaducts that kind of divides the ponds. These are certainly uh, natural. They are created many years ago. Uh, and I think it works well with today's discussion, the opposite of you. And what do I mean by that? Why am I choosing that as a theme? Well, many of us look to work on our personalities, our characters, and we try to embed a little bit more of what we think we are. And I'm going to walk down here. Um, this is where I'm going to actually walk, just to give you an idea. <laughs> um, you don't want any psychotic breaks at this time. <laughs> so our discussion is all about the opposite of you. And looking at your own personalities. Uh, good morning, Henry. Thanks for joining in. Looking at your own personalities, what is it that you've felt and identified as needing to be addressed. And in this case, instead of saying, well, let me see what I can do to shore those aspects up, what if you were to take the opposite point of view? Well, if you're good at a certain topic or subject, that's a good asset. If you feel, on the other hand, that you have certain challenges, what would someone who has those abilities, who has those capabilities, how would they present themselves? What type of personality are they? What actions do they take on a daily basis to sustain, support, and build an endurance? We call that resilience. What would they do? So now you're on a projection of adding, not just looking at your own uh, inequalities and saying, well, what do I have to do? Rather, and moreover, looking at what people who have managed to arrest those reactionary impulses, they've managed to uh, create a supportive mechanism of assets, of procedures, actions, um, very much as with the military, they talk about information, right? They need information. Well, when you look at your own personalities and you're perhaps not as comfortable or as happy or as content, which by the way, has its own uh, benefits, that perspective of always looking to improve. And then look outside yourself and say, what are others doing? What have others done? And if we go, you know, we always talk about going to the stake of the matter as early as possible, um, instead of ha having people languish with uh, um, profanity, right? That's the stuff that we build up to. And, and it's, it has its purpose, obviously. But what can we do to begin to build those other resources, those other capabilities in ourselves. So that when we find ourselves in situations and challenges, we can begin to draw on those resources. So let's take, for example, uh, the method of studying. How are you able to identify how you particularly learn the individual, not what you've been taught to learn, not and in some cases, not even how you have been taught to learn. More importantly, how are you receptive to information? How are you um, at the height of learning? 
what drives you, what wakes you up instinctually in a positive manner with a can-do behavior that says, I want to learn. That's the type of intangible I'm really referring to. We all come through educational systems that kind of gored us through a process of learning. Do you find that beneficial? And if you don't, have you looked around for other methods, other resources? In the same case, we can look at when we find ourselves in, as we refer to as pain and suffering, frustration, something's not going right. Can we look outside ourselves, find other people who have gone through maybe similar situations, and not a situation that says, I survived a burning building, or I survived a plane crash, or I survived a stampede at a concert, or even I survived the stampede of our family's incessant droning of what we should and should not do. What I'm referring to is the inner voice that challenges whether we are capable of dealing with a situation. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you find yourself being unable to physically move off a situation, to address a situation. Here's uh, another five, four points. This is how remote I am. Um, and this is why I come out here. This is my think tank. This is my think tank. This is how remote it is out here and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I normally come out a little earlier because not only are you feeling the frost, seeing the dew, but you get to see some incredibly beautiful uh, nature's best. We have an incredible, um, I won't call it an aviary, but it's a preserve of wildlife here. And if you come out early enough, you might even see a snapping dragon. Uh, I think it's a, an otter. I get the two confused all the time. So back to our discussion. Here you are facing a situation and your whole body freezes. Did you, do you ask yourself, what is causing that? Steve, good morning. Happy New Year to Steve. I uh, haven't heard from you in a while. Good to see you. Hope the family's well. Um, are you able to identify what has caused the freeze in your behavior? in your mindset. What are you thinking that's holding you back? And then moving forward as a good coach should help you with, and that is, what does it look like if you resolve the situation and you're beginning to move out and you have identified the result or the process to be sustained? So if we feel stuck in a situation. First off, do we identify what has caused it? Are we brave enough to identify what's caused it? In some cases, we are in denial. Then we have to say, in order to move to that state that we wish to be in, what does that feel like? What does that look like? What is the environment? If we are, we are very good, of course, at saying, well, I want X amount of dollars. What we're not good at is what do we do with it to sustain that anticipated emotional high? Because it's the sustaining that is the trouble, is the, is the challenge. If you've ever seen the HBO documentary on people that have won the lottery, and I'm talking serious money, 20, 200, 300, 500,000, a million, excuse me, million dollars, within 10 years they've lost it. That's because there's no future thought and visualization of where they want to be and how to sustain it. Well, it's the same thing with our emotions. At times in life, I certainly have found myself stuck, mentally stuck in a rut. So what did I do? First of all, I acknowledged it. Yes, I'm in a funk. That's what it is. You are in a funk. I've even done a Managing Change in 60 Seconds audio file on that. That's interesting, right? 60 seconds, 170 words. And then I said, who do I know that I could reach out to? And in a lot of cases, um, it wasn't family necessarily. 
It wasn't my church necessarily, but rather it was just having a conversation with someone, reaching out to them and saying, do you mind if I have a conversation? I want to share something with you and seeing their feedback. And it's the opposite of what I thought I needed that gave me some of the answers that moved me off that initial toadstool, if I can use that term, right? That mushroom, sitting on a mushroom. I got off the toadstool. Once you're off the toadstool, now you can start to think clearly because the challenge is, whoops, <laughs> I'm spitting at myself. <laughs> this challenge is I don't want to move. I don't want to go somewhere that I'm not sure of, even though where I am is painful. And by reaching out to people, looking at other experiences of people, of how they've managed the state, not so much the identical experience. It's the mental fortitude. And most importantly, can you identify people who are going through it right now? It's one thing to talk about um, Savani, thank you very much for joining in. Um, it's one thing to talk about or talk with people who have gone through it and their life is back on track. But can you speak to someone who's going through it right now and is availing themselves of opportunities that even they did not think were possible? We talk about managing change through effective communications because it starts with ourselves. It starts with our own culture, our social uh, engagement, our introduction to how things presumably work. And as we've identified in previous discussions, we've been introduced at a very young age, as we were toddlers, on what is and what isn't in our culture, in our society. That then expands when we become young adults, when we become teenagers, when we go into the workforce, and becomes somewhat of a conundrum because... When life doesn't feed back on us the way we think, then we are in that rut. And my hope with sharing this with you today is look at the opposite of what you expected. Look at those who perhaps did not have the resources that you think you need and were able to address, move out from, and begin to answer through sustainable processes, methodologies that we share in our strategic intervention uh, programs in getting to where we want to be. And the first step is just moving off the toadstool, as I mentioned. You'd move off that toadstool by talking to someone else, not someone you like, not someone you're familiar with, not someone even that you necessarily respect, perhaps just a stranger. You'll be amazed in some of the conversations I've had with people from a t-shirt sign that they've had, they have on their chest, uh, from just discussing uh, an, a point of view, and then listening with intent on their responses. Are their responses any less of a commitment than yours? If you feel that you're rejecting that unfamiliar response, that unfamiliar uh, perspective, now you're beginning to expand, if you allow yourself, you're beginning to expand the possibilities of addressing your own situation. Because in many cases, what we know is not addressing the situation, right? Otherwise, we wouldn't be in the funk, we wouldn't be stuck. On the other hand, if we wait a moment and listen to those other people's conversations and voices, Maybe then we'll get a different perspective, maybe a combination of ideas that have become clear only because of the conversation, because of the engagement. Look at, here's another example, look at the dynamics of people from different cultures on their point of view of what is democracy. Look at the point of view of people that talk about preserving life. Look from different cultures, different nationalities, and different ages, right? The fundamental behind uh, underlying all of these is that we wish to be engaged, we need to learn, and we need to share that information so that we believe we're helping others achieve what they need. I think the, I'll use the term bastardization of that, is we then corral people into our own understanding. 
instead of listening carefully and saying, where is this person coming from? What's their point of view? How are they addressing these issues? And can I use a portion, a percentage, a, a part of their process, a part of their thinking? If you've ever listened to satire music from a Western point of view, after a while it becomes a bit of a challenge. I ask you then, just as with chamber music or with uh, European classic music, and certainly with uh, certain other genres of music, take portions of it. Don't try and swallow the whole thing. That's what looking at the opposite side of your learned, established, believed concepts of how to address issues will begin to help you. Expand your cranium, elevate, as we say, elevate the species. And instead of saying what is not working, instead of saying what won't happen or is not beneficial, or even being sarcastic, be more open. Because the brain is capable of absorbing, adapting, and evolving itself to find solutions. Because that's what we are designed for. So, an early Sunday morning reflection on managing change through effective communications. This is Ronald Allen. You know where to find me. Enjoy your weekend.